once again from shortmeetina.com with my daily recap. How's it going? How are you feeling today? Uh, before we get underway and jump into a recap of the overall markets, I want to get a few things out the way. Number one, if this is your first time, your very first time tuning into a Short Me Tina video, do us a solid. We have this thing that we do here. We want you to comment. We want you to say hello. We want you to let us know that this is your first time here. Among other things, if there's other things you want to share with me and us, go for it. If you're returning, you know what I'm going to say. Thank you so much for tuning in daily with us here. We know you can be doing a gazillion other things at this moment in this time, but you choose to spend it listening to a short meeting of video. And because of that, we are super grateful. That's the first thing. Uh, what we've been doing lately, I want to say the past two or three weeks, is we want to kick off all of our videos with our mission statement, right? We think that it sets the tone for not only why we do the videos, but what we're doing here uh, within the short meeting community. So what is our mission? What is our goal? Our mission is to build a powerhouse of successful traders and help you find more winners. Our conclusion, right? I think I'm right. If you think I'm wrong, comment in the comment section. Let's talk it out. Let's debate it. My conclusion, our conclusion is if you win, we win. So our mission is to build a powerhouse of successful traders and to help you find more winners because if you win, we win. I think it's an osh, not osh, but I think it's a rather an awesome mission statement. If you agree, comment in the comment section and let me know if you disagree. Then, hey, give me a better mission statement that align with our goals. I will run with that as well, all right? But before we can do that, before we can do all these great things, what do we need to do? We need to find out what is your biggest frustration, your biggest frustration in reaching your trading goals, right? Biggest frustration in reaching your trading goals. Uh, we want we want to find out, what is it? Let us know, comment in the comment section. And only because it's here, I'm going to do it. Uh, and also because it puts fire underneath my you-know-what. Uh, and as I promised, you will get very soon the three pillars of successful trading. Um, again, I think, not I think, I definitely emailed my emailing list. So if you're not on that list, you need to head on over to Shore Tina right now, shoremetina.com and sign up. But last week, uh, I indicated to everyone what the three pillars of successful trading is, in my opinion, the foundation of successful trading. And I'm going to flush it out uh, with a video. It's not going to be a long video, but it's going to be a, vi a video with more details indicating what I believe those three pillars are. So if you've missed it, the three pillars, in my opinion, are methodology, in no particular order, methodology, mindset or mental discipline, and money management. Think about that. Methodology, mindset or mental discipline, and money management. You need to have all those three if you're going to be a successful trader. If you do not have all three, I don't care if you have one or two, you have to have all three to be a successful trader. If you're not doing well, I suspect it's because you're missing one, if not all of those three pillars. Again, comment in the comment section. Let me know if you agree with uh, my belief of what the three pillars are to successful trading. All right, so we got those things out the way. Let's uh, just get into a recap of the overall market. All right, so we have the SPY S&P 500 daily chart dating back to 2017. We have a habit here uh, with all of our videos to kick it off with a recap of the overall markets, right? I have a lot of foundational principles, as you can see, in terms of trading. Why? Because I've been trading for over 15 years and I've learned a lot of things. So again, in addition to the three pillars, 
that I've mentioned before. Another principle that I have is you want to pay attention to the overall markets first, meaning you want to pay attention to the indexes, the SPY, the Russell, the Dow, the NASDAQ. I, I typically tend to focus on the SPY and small cap because I tend to trade within those. Uh, but the reason I focus on the overall markets first, as you should, overall markets first, individual stocks second, right? The overall markets and what it is doing or isn't doing should dictate the type of trades you take. Not necessarily, well, I should trade tech or, you know, n not in that sense, but uh, it should dictate the direction in which you trade. Are you going to be long? Are you going to be short? Are you going to be out the market? Are you going to be on the sidelines, right? For you to know that, in my opinion, you need to pay attention to the overall markets first because generally speaking, uh, individual stocks will follow what the overall markets are doing. So what's the SPY doing? Again, daily chart dating back to 2017, in my opinion, the SPY has been within a range. The lower end of that range comes in at 260. If you've been paying attention, you know what I'm going to say. The upper end of that range comes in uh, between 280 to 282. And I've been, for a very long time, I've actually been uh, recapping the SPY since mid-October when this crash initially happened. So uh, we can say mid to maybe even February, maybe at the beginning of the year, I said, well, Let's pay attention to 280 to 282, a break above that, a sustained break above that, and the markets can rally. What happened? We sustained that break above 282, went as high as 294.95, quite shy of 295, uh, and then we subsequently pulled back. Uh, the last few videos I've said, well, we should maintain 280 to 282. We need to pay attention to see whether or not the markets will honor that once resistance now support level i also indicated uh the more times that level is tested and in this particular or i said I, I spoke generally speaking i said well the more times a particular level is tested whether or not it's on the uh lower end or the upper end whether it's support being tested or resistance being tested chances are that level might break and so with the spy we've touched uh, or we've tested rather 280 to 282 for quite a few trading days. I want to say dating back to uh, the early part of May, we started retesting or testing that 280 to 282 level for quite some time. What happened today? And uh, well, this was you could have anticipated this, right? Because yesterday's low was 280.13. We closed at 280.15. Again, when we there's another principle, right? And I learned all these things. One, by reading, also two, by being active in the markets, paying attention, right? And the more, uh, we already got to that. When a stock closes, or in this particular an index or an ETF, when it closes close to the low, low of the day, chances are the selling will continue into the following trading day or within that week. What happened? Again, the low yesterday was 280.13. We closed at 280.15, closed close to the low of today of the day rather, and what happened, the selling actually, the selling continued into today with us going as low as 276.71 with confirming volume, we bounced, closed at 278.26, am I completely bearish? You know what, I'm not gonna tell you what I'm doing right now. If you've been, so this is for the folks that have been listening for quite some time, what do you think I'm doing right now uh, with the fact that the markets have pierced that level that I spoke about, that 280 to 282 level. So anyway, I'm still paying attention to that. Tell me what you think I'm doing right now in the markets. Uh, what else do we have to talk about? And then we have the IWM daily chart dating back to 2017. Uh, I'm just focusing, I'm focusing in obviously on price action dating back to that initial breakdown, October of 2018, that's where tons of volume poured in. You want to pay attention to what the market is doing when tons of volume is pouring in because you have a lot of participants at any rate. Uh, so I'm paying attention to the IWM dating back to October of 2018. I have several levels that I'm paying attention to. The first, uh, no, in no particular order. Uh, I'm paying attention to resistance of $160. Why? Because we have not really sustain the break above that level dating back back to October. That's about seven or so months. 
we have not sustained, right? We've made attempts twice. We got past 160, closed above 160, but couldn't hold that level. We couldn't sustain it. So we haven't really sustained that 160 since uh, mid-October, which tells me it's a huge level that we need to penetrate. And if we can and sustain it, that is a tip in the direction of the bulls. Second level I'm paying attention to is shorter term support of 148 to 150. That for the most part has held with the exception of, uh, let's see, let's go back. Actually, no, for the most part, it has held. 148 to 150 has held dating back to February of 2019. So that's about uh, three going on for a month. So in many levels, that is something you wanna pay attention to as well. Uh, so we definitely, we were under 150, we're under 149. So we closed at 148.34 today. Uh, we went as low as 147.36. So again, I was correct. Uh, well, not necessarily correct. I, I knew we breached a level somewhere. I wasn't quite sure. I didn't know it was as recent as today. So anyway, so we breached 148 today, going as low as 147.36, but we rebounded some again to close at 148.34. So essentially heading into the remainder of the week to kick off uh, the month of June, that's what I'm paying attention to. 148 to 150, if we can get above and hold things in my opinion, they still look rosy. Obviously, I want us to get above 160. If we start drifting further away, uh, you know, away from that 148, 150 level, say, for example, tomorrow we break down that level with confirming volume uh, and range within the candle, then again, I'm going to be quite cautious. And the bullish thesis uh, that I had coming into the year, I wouldn't say I throw it away, but I want to reevaluate and reassess. What else? And because I took 11 minutes just on the SPY and the IWM, I'm going to breeze through these other stocks that I have uh, to discuss. So the first one we're going to kick it off with is ticker SOLY daily chart up about 42% on the day. So I did a uh, video on this particular ticker yesterday. And essentially what I said, well, it's up hugely on the day. It was up over about 200%. Uh, I said, well, if it has more run into it, right, you should pay attention to what happens in pre-market. Uh, you should pay attention to what happens once the stock opens up. After hours, it was doing well. It was still moving up. Um, I'm going to conclude pre-market as well. Stock was still moving up. Opened today at 21.10. So we opened above the close. We opened above what it did in after hours. Uh, and so definitely had a little bit of run left in it going as high as $29. Am I in the trade? No, did not partake in this. Uh, we closed at 20.28, right? The low of the day comes in at 17.36. So high 29, closed at 20. Look at volume, a bit of selling. What you're going to want to pay attention to, and I'm going to follow that up with an example uh, with ticker XELA after this. What you want to look, uh, what you want to pay attention to, obviously, it's what's going on in after hours and what's going to happen in pre market. If we open below the close, chances are you're going to see more selling. So pay attention to the close of 2028. If it opens below that and it can't get above, chances are you're going to see uh, a sell off. What else? And then we have ticker XELA daily chart. So again, I said I was going to compare and contrast ticker SOLY. Uh, the stock closed relatively close to the high of the day yesterday. You had uh, the stock continued, continued its momentum into after hours trading and pre-market and it opened up above the close. Let's contrast that to what happened with ticker XELA, hence why SOLY was able to have a little bit more of a run uh, today, right? So ticker XELA, similarly to ticker SOLY, closed relatively close to the high of today, right? The high of yesterday was 242, it closed at 239. This stock did not have the continuation we saw in ticker SOLY, why you ask? Look at where it opened at, right? It opened at 237, whereas yesterday it closed at 239. So it opened below the close of yesterday. That should be a signal that, well, if it can't get above the close, chances are you're going to see more selling, hence why you saw the stock shed north of 10% today. So with ticker SOLY, the candle for me says a lot, but 
pay attention to where the stock opens up. Um, so going forward with ticker XELA, the low of the day, 212, close to 219. You know what I say, if a stock closes close to the low of the day, chances are the selling will continue into the following trading day, if not the following trading week. So be cautious if you're looking to get long or if you're long in your trap, pay attention to low of 212. If we take that out, chances are it's gonna go lower. What else? All right, so update on ticker Disney or ticker DIS, Disney daily chart dating back to 2016 again. We played the range on this particular stock. I will link the video on how to trade a range. In my opinion, a very easy setup to learn and to trade. We got into this stock in the, what was our range? Was it the low 100? I wanna say the low 100s, obviously seeing the stock shoot up to, what was the most recent high? Most recent high of, I believe it was like 142, one, yeah, 142.37 pulled back here, closed at 131.57. Now, granted, yes, we are off a bit from the high of 142.37. Am I bearish on Disney? No, am I still long? Absolutely. When you look at what's going on with the marketing, you look at what's going on with Disney, in my opinion, it is holding up relatively well. So when the market starts uh, uh, charging back, I am sure Disney will charge back along with it. My initial target, I think, was around 150. I see this is a $200 stock. I like Disney. What else? All right, ticker ZNGA, daily chart, updating again, and try to see the theme. So we see what's going on with the overall markets, right? It's not doing so great, right? It's, it's off a little bit. Let's look at ticker ZNGA, daily chart, right? Closed at 619, the high is around, let's say 630. We're still hanging around the high. That says to me that the stock, again, is holding up fairly well. When we got into this stock, we got into it, I wanna say the low to mid threes, obviously started let going, uh, letting go of profits uh, when we hit that 70, 80, and 90% mark. Uh, and again, I always say, let your winners run. Am I still bullish on Zynga? Zynga? Absolutely. Am I still long 100%? I see this as an $8 stock. Again, as with Disney, when the market is clear in terms of what it wants to do, when it's in a clear uptrend, then I think these stocks will benefit. Again, sitting here at six, I still like the stock. I still like the chart. I still see $8 in the cards. What else? And then we have ticker EVOP daily chart, another stock in my opinion that has held up fairly well uh, when considering what's going on with the uh, overall markets. Closed at thirty dollars and five cents. Full disclaimer. Full disclosure. We got into this stock when it was trading around. I want to say the low twenties, and I remain bullish on ticker EVOP. Do I still like it? Absolutely. I still see this as a $40 stock. And if it gets there, when it gets there, it will represent a 100% increase from our buy zone. So do I like it? I still do. It's holding up well. When the markets uh, get gets going again, I think EVOP will get along right with it. What else? And then we have Walmart daily chart, another stock we got into in the premium member community. A bit of a slow moving stock. It's been on my watch list, I wanna say for the entire year. It hasn't done really much in terms of price movements, but I really like it as setting up in my opinion, uh, if you look at the chart, especially dating back to 2018, August of 2018. So it's coming up on a year for me where the stock is kind of like, or the chart looks like it's really kind of gearing up or winding up for that overshoot, right? So even at 102, I still think it's a good area to get into it. I'm not saying to jump in. Obviously, you wanna do your homework uh, and you wanna jump in at a price point that works for you, uh, but definitely put ticker WMT on your watch list. I have an initial target of 110, but I can clearly see this going to 120. I still like this chart uh, and this stock. What else? And then we have ticker ZTS daily chart dating back to uh, 2018, but let's focus in on price action here. Uh, stock trading within a range, in my opinion. Again, 
Uh, I've already linked somewhere on how to trade ranges. Make sure you click on that. Uh, so even sitting, we got in, full disclaimer, we got into the stock in the low 90s. Uh, so even sitting here at 101.15, am I bullish? Absolutely. The stock just recently made, I believe, all-time highs of, uh, it was like in the 104s. Don't quote me exactly. It was like 104 or something. So it's not very far off from its all-time highs. Definitely put ZTS on your watch. It's another stock, in my opinion, that's ready to explode. I see 110 to 120, as with some of the others. What else? And a quick follow-up on ticker SDRL daily chart. Off another 4% on the day. Uh, for the past four or five days, it's been a complete bloodbath with this particular uh, ticker. Yesterday, I did a video and I said, well, to see whether or not the selling is overdone, you want to pay attention to the low of 411 what happened today the stock opened right it opened at 399 so it i don't mean to laugh but i just i just cannot believe how unloved in the moment this stock is uh so at any rate we opened at uh 399 below uh, below the low of yesterday which was 411 that in itself should tell you that the stock was going to pull back more now granted it only went as low as 383 and it has since bounced to close at 407. The high of the day is 410. So uh, pay attention tomorrow, Friday, you might get that dead cat bounce. But as I've indicated before, unless it can get above that 775 to $8 area, which is a while from 470, looking at a 100% move, unless it can get above here, the uh, chart, in my opinion, uh, remains fundamentally broken. What else? And let's round it out and wrap it up with ticker G-O-O-S, Canada Goose Daily Chart dating back to, let's focus in, let's focus in on when the stock be began to trade in a range, in my opinion. Full disclaimer, full disclosure, we got into this trade back in 2017, I want to say, and saw the stock make a huge run up, I think north of 100%, if not more. I did, a, I did a video on this particular stock a few days ago, and I said, well, it's coming into, in my opinion, buy territory again, paying attention to this range, uh, but I wasn't ready to pull the trigger uh, because it wasn't uh, at a price point in which I wanted to trade it. I think at the time when I did the video, the stock was trading in the 40s, somewhere around there. Uh, I'm doing this video one to reinforce another lesson, another principle. I think I've listed several uh I guess I'll I'll put it in the description, the principles and the lessons I've learned over 15 years. At any rate, uh, so this reinforces another lesson, uh, that of patience, right? You have to remain patient in the markets. You know, you patient in terms of waiting for your setup, waiting for your signal, waiting for your price point. It is okay to wait. You do not always have to be in the market. You do not always need to be trading in the market. Like, it just does not make sense. You want to wait, almost like a sniper, right? Uh, maybe that's not the best uh, analogy, but you want to you wanna wait for that prime opportunity. You don't just want to constantly shoot from the hips. You want to be very strategic, right, and disciplined. At any rate, with ticker G-O-O-S, I'm saying to 100%, put this on your radar, put this on your watch list. Again, I'm not ready to pull the trigger here at 33.89. Uh, the low of the day was 33.58. There might be more selling. We're already, we're already off about 30%. I'm surprised it's gotten this bad, but the market will do what the market does. With confirming volume, it broke the lower end of support. So at least uh, this uh, yearly uh, range that the stock has been trading in has been broken. Um, so it doesn't mean that I'm going to throw the stock away. No, there's still potentially a trading opportunity. Just means I might have to let the stock settle some. Uh, but again, the lesson here is remain patient. You don't always have to jump in, wait for your price point. Sometimes it's okay to wait to see what the markets will do. So that's kind of it. Tina here once again from shortmetina.com. I thought the rest of the videos were going to be like really speedy, but I guess I had a lot of things to say today, making up for uh, my 
lack of a video yesterday. At any rate, Tina here once again from TrueWantMeTina.com. If you enjoyed any portion of this video, I'd like for you to do three things for me. One, comment in the comment section. I've said a gazillion things, a bunch of things. Comment, say hi, let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my analysis. Let me know if you have any questions. That's the first thing. Second thing is if you want more videos like this, I do them Monday through Friday when the stock market is open. Expect a video. If you are subscribed at our YouTube channel at TrueWantMeTina and notifications are turned on, you will never miss a video. And lastly, I've been trading for well over 15 years. I am very surprised that I've made it this far, this long. I just love the markets. Uh, so if you think you can learn anything from me, then head on over to shortmeetina.com. Sign up, become a member. Thank you for listening, and as always, thank you for the support.